Alright, this video is about how I'm wearing this hat backwards to look cool because I care about what you guys think of me. And getting the white. Can't even talk when I'm on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and what? what was I was going to say, and to make sure the lighting is perfect because we want the lighting to be good. And I just want to say something. And this video is about how I'm going to feel on my deathbed. And, um, Nathaniel, <laughs> <laughs> back to what you said that uh, you want to be heard. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't really sure that I didn't want to say that, you know, but I just wanted to say it. Because the earlier I find myself getting involved in a conversation, the easier it is to talk. Oh, I like that. I like you taking a little ambition. Yeah. 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 I've been doing that lately, you know, like out at dinners, like it's easy for me to take the back seat and not say anything for like the first five minutes. I'm waiting for like the perfect, most wisdom spoken words. But what happens is I end up not saying anything and then I end up not talking the entire night. You get stuck in the whirlwind of analysis, but paralysis by analysis. Yeah, so I gotta get in there. Gotta get in there quick. I like that. I like, don't let great get in the way of good. Mm-hmm. Good point. <laughs> um, but so what, now back to, do you think it's important for you to be heard? Yes. Because I think I have a lot of good to share. Hold on, who's it important for, for the people that are hearing you or for you to be expressive? Um, what now? Who who is it important to? You said it is important for you to be heard. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it important um, for the people hearing you? For the that's things? a good question. I don't know who's it more important for, but I think it's very important for me to be heard, just for myself, and very important for people to hear what I have to say. So we weren't sure where this video was going to go, but I think I'm feeling where it's going to go. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Where do you know where it's going to go? Uh, no. Do you think you know where it's going to go? <laughs> I have that feeling that it's going to be about being true to yourself and to everyone else. I thought it was going to be us interviewing Nathaniel. Oh, whoa, look at it. He's got the different chair, he's in the middle, he he's the talking middle. about saying the things right up front so he can be heard. You it are It sounds like you're ready for an interview. Come on. Let's interview Nathaniel. All right. Rob Ross, interview Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Ah, <sighs> so, so how, how long ago did you know that so, your purpose in life? My purpose in life? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know if I do know my purpose in life, but if I had to guess, if I had to guess what it is, yeah. I would guess that my purpose in life is to seek God's will for my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly sure what that is. You know, it changes day by day, but just to seek it, you know, really ask Him, what is what is your will for my life, and not always does that align with mine. Well, what are some of the answers He's given you recently? What are some of the purpose is he's given you? To do me. To do you? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, to really just own everything there is to own about me. You know, the good, the bad, and really sharing that with people. Because for most of my life, sadly enough, I have suppressed maybe the majority of who I am. How I feel, what I think. And I think what God wants for me to do right now is shine what's really, be a living example of what it's like to own who you are and shine His light. Now, my question is, that was a great answer. When I said so and I interrupted the fact, Timothy, did you judge me for being annoying? No. Uh, I judged yeah. myself. For oh, you mean how you're like purposely trying to yeah, come off? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought it was kind of funny. Because uh, I, I, I thought, because yeah. I thought I knew what you were doing. Yeah, I was trying to think that. I was like, oh man, I started getting in my head about uh, the viewers will think I'm being annoying instead of funny. Yeah. So it's kind of like an inside joke. So what do you do? That leads to my next question. What do you think the best way is? Do you think it's good to be in your head when interacting with other people? And if you don't, I'm assuming you're going to say no. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you think there's a better alternative. How do you get out of your head? Well, by in your head, do you mean not expressing what you're thinking? Yeah, it's kind of analyzing things, like not being present, like thinking about what you just said or what you just did. Like, are these people judging me, caring about what other people think? Like, how do you just get present with people? How do you do it personally? How do you get present with people rather than judging yourself or judging other people's judgments that you imagine they're judging you? Because I know that's an easy trap to fall into. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happens when I'm in an interaction with people, in the beginning of an interaction, most of the time my thoughts tend to want to latch on to things that are uncomfortable to share. So I don't want to share those thoughts. But I find if you, if you go ahead and share those things, all of a sudden you're becoming congruent. You're, what you're expressing is congruent with how you feel, and it's just kind of like you start to build momentum. Mm. 
So like right now, for example, I have a like I have a doubt that like I'm not that entertaining. You know that maybe if Timothy and Daniel were doing more of the talking, then it would be like a funnier, more entertaining video. Those are some of the thoughts I'm having right now. And that's so funny because from my perspective, that was probably the most entertaining thing you said. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that paradoxical? You know what's funny uh, is the <laughs> consistency of the inferiority complex that I see. You know, remember we were at the grocery store mm -hmm. yesterday and we saw this black guy, right? We love black people. <laughs> um, and he was just built like nearly perfect in my opinion. We especially love black people out here because there's not many. Yeah. There's so not if you're black out here, here, we love you extra more. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're unique. We love unique people. So that, yeah, and here we go, we tell this guy, this guy, we stop him, like, hey man, I want to tell you this earlier, but I was too scared to. So now I got the opportunity. You're, you're built nearly perfectly. He says, I'm small, man. And he meant that. <laughs> I, he was bigger than us. He, he's oh. bigger than us and what? built like what football a football team. Is he on? Yeah, he's on a football team. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, what are you talking about? He's small. And he wasn't joking that he thought he was small. He really thought he was small. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just reminded me, as you said, like you think that you're not as entertaining as we are, but it's just it's just that theme of like no one thinks that they're a you know, good enough or yeah, yeah. So including me. So that being another great question for our interviewee is. How do you, what do you do? How do you overcome the inferiority complex? Uh, really just by embracing it and, and sharing it with people because you'll find as you do that, everyone can relate to it. Oh. So yeah. that's, that's where the real magic starts to take place is when you start telling people you know how you're scared, you're intimidated, you're, uh, you're feeling insecure. These are all things that people are dealing with on an everyday basis. So when you express it, it's like immediate connection. Do you have an example of how you've done that recently? Um, well, right, I felt like I just did it a few minutes ago. You did? That was one example. Um, trying to think here. Just, while you're thinking of that, I was just thinking about how this definitely relates to the wisdom bomb that Perzon dropped on us a while back about what's most personal and what's most universal mm -hmm. and how that continues to resonate in our lives. Yeah. And if we reveal what we typically conceal, cool things happen. Yeah, by revealing them, I think you release them. Yeah. And you can embrace the freedom that God has given us in our hearts. Mm, brother Daniel over here, he reminds me about something I was reading in uh, 2 Corinthians this morning. About Paul was saying that if he's going to brag or if he's going to boast about something, he's going to boast about his weaknesses. Mm, really? Yeah, I can't believe I read that yeah. this morning. And that's exactly what you did last night. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna, wow. He's going to boast about his weaknesses so he can then show people how great God's grace is. Yeah, I want to boast about Timothy boasting about his weaknesses last night. We were at dinner and he was a, he was with a girl that he's been seeing. You know, probably the girl he has the most feelings towards, <laughs> maybe wow. ever. Interview me, he's flipping his script right now. <laughs> and, he, and he openly admits in front of the girl and everyone else that was at the dinner that he is jealous of Daniel. And you said that was one of your biggest fears, right? Yeah, one of your biggest fears admitting that in front of Sharon. Does that still hurt <laughs> when you're making those faces? Um, or you... No, it hurts a lot less. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so that was, he was kind of boasting in a way of like, hey, like, look, at, I'm jealous of Daniel in front of his girl. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was cool. I thought that was like a true act of being humble. That's and, like a true humbleness. And it's just top notch confidence. Hmm. How confident, how much confidence does it take to brag about your weaknesses? Hmm. That's beyond role playing. I mean, there's people that come off as greatly confident, and then there's people that can brag. Then there's people that can co be confident, but how they're not confident, or they where they lack confidence. Yeah. Wow, that's true confidence. Uh, thanks, thanks guys. Yeah, it's uh, something that uh, Nathaniel's done, and we've all done, is to feature our flaws. And face our fears. And, you know, it's these things that we typically think that are very shameful. Mm. We should celebrate them. It's it's a powerful way to get people's attention and respect is to feature your flaws. Would you agree with that? Yeah, not. Only, I mean, that's just a side bonus. Like, even if you were to win people's approval or not, we put on a pedestal. Just really, what what is true for you? Like, what are you feeling? 
and sharing that with people. And you will give, you will be very inspirational to people when you start being that vulnerable and sharing just who you really are, you know, what are you feeling right now in this moment? Wow, and what are you feeling right now in this moment? Uh, a little nervous still, you know? Oh, and what does that feel like? What does that feel like physically? I'm just uh, my heartbeat, my heartbeat's a little fast, you know? And would that be, what, is there a difference between that and like, say, excitement, or if you're gonna go surfing, or if you're gonna approach a beautiful woman, or you're swimming? Yeah, it's all, it's all pretty similar, you know, and uh, it's changing your perspective on that can be awesome because all of a sudden what you once feared as being a negative situation, such as being nervous or scared, you can turn it into being excited or just really alive on life. So I have a question for you. You obviously have a message to share with people. Mm -hmm. How do you know it's working? How do you know, how, why do you even believe in your message? That, does it work for you? Yeah, probably because it's a, it's a way of peace for me. You know, I feel most at peace when, like, what, at the end of the day, like, what can I do other than just really, you know, be, share with the world who I am, what I'm feeling on the deepest levels possible. What else can I do? And I know from, like, relationships with you guys, with our family, with people that I'm really close with, I found the most meaning out of those relationships where you can really just own yourself in each other's company. You get the that's the most intimate way to go. So that's that's how I feel like I know. Hmm. And what does that feel like to you physically? I'm just curious what peace feels like to you physically. Hmm. I don't know. I know. I'm just curious. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll have to think you about it. Yeah. Next time you feel peaceful, you should see what your body is doing. Mm -hmm. I imagine that it's just like energy spread throughout all out. Mm -hmm. Like there's not like a blockage in your heart or a blockage in your throat or a blockage in your ears. I imagine it's just like energy, like a calm energy everywhere. I was just thinking that. And I imagine depression is actually the opposite of no energy anywhere. Yeah. Like you can and you feel like no energy. Yeah. It's good. And anxiety is probably like a lot of energy is stuck somewhere. Yep. Um, we're, this is all kind of scratching the surface of losing your mind and coming to your senses. But yeah. we can use that example with fear and excitement being the same thing on a sensory level. That how uh, when we these words such as being scared or nervousness or anxiety <coughs> or uh, what was someone said the other day? They used a word that was like that was like that's a word to hold you out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, nervous, being nervous, uh, being nervous or scared or like uh, awkward. Awkward, awkward. Oh, yeah. Someone kept saying the word awkward. I was like, when someone asked me, what is awkward? And I said, I don't know what awkward is. Awkward is a way uh, to hold people down. Or as a word to use to hold people down. Absolutely. This is, for, if you're watching this video, your mission is next time someone says something's awkward, you're like, oh yeah? Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's explore that further. Because what awkwardness is, is it's like an unexplored territory. It's a new situation that we're not used to dealing with or uh, navigate to. So why not? Well, it's a situation we typically think our way around. We could actually, if we feel our way through it, we can awkward grow. might be awesome. Yeah, we can really grow a lot from it. So next time one of your friends says that you're being awkward, typically they're the ones feeling uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, like, it's like who smelt it, dealt it. You know, like next time you're in a circle and someone's like awkward, well, they smelt it and they, they probably also dealt it. They can't handle the uncomfortableness. They can't handle the insecurity that the next few moment, the few next few moment, few moments uh, have. So what I'm hearing you say is when someone says awkward or this is awkward or awkward, they they deflect with that word or that phrase. That they're basically coming into a, a situation that they is unknown. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do with deal with it. Mm -hmm. So instead of going outside your comfort zone where all the growth takes place. Yes. They want to stay put where they're at and deflect and think their way around it and label it and avoid it. Uh, absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Which they leads. stay in their hole. They stay in their hole and avoid all types of fear just to continue in that safe place of stagnant um, complacency. Now, which leads me to my next question. Well, I'm actually now I'm thinking about like sperm traveling down a tunnel, mm -hmm. like the funnel to the egg, and they don't know where they're going, but they keep going until they don't know where they're going mm -hmm. until they create life. And that's mm -hmm. like the miracle of life. 
Wow. Uh, but can you imagine the sperm beside not to go anywhere? Yeah. No <laughs> <laughs> life would be crazy. Right. <laughs> That's just a crazy thought. But, uh, which leads me to Daniel, the question of Daniel. Um, what do you do when you feel awkward? Or how do you deal with feeling awkward or at least embracing awkwardness to feel out, to realize it's awesome? Yeah, well, I think most of my life I ran away from it, like most people do, you know? Um, and I, I'm starting to wonder if that's like people fearing their greatness. You know, you, there's a quote out there that says something about we're not afraid of our inadequacy, but we're, infra- we're afraid of how great we can be. Because, yeah, because I wonder if on a subconscious level, you know that by going there, you can become great. You can tap into new levels of who you are. So that's a side note I've had, a thought I've had recently. But um, lately, over the past year or so, I have... I've more so looked, seeked out opportunities for awkwardness or nervousness or whatever it is that makes me scared. Fear. Fear is a great word for me because I, I can identify things that I'm very scared of very easily. And so I look at it and I'm like, oh, that scares me? Let's go there. Let's see what that ha- what um, journey or um, adventure that fear has for me. And I found that the times I go after it, it's just unbelievable, the, the doors that open. Wow. So my question, my awkward question was so relevant because it's something that you've actually shifted recently and you've noticed the profound, oh, yeah. the profound yeah. results from it. Yeah, for sure. So you would, you would say the times that you, just to reiterate, it might be redundant, but for the people to really drive this point home, that you decided to embrace awkwardness, to chase mm-hmm. your awkwardness and it's added immense amounts of value to your life? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I want, maybe I got to that point because, uh, you know, I dropped out of school. I, there was a few months or years in my time where I didn't have much going on. So I, I uh, seeked out new ways to find excitement. And you, there is just, I mean, every day, every, it, it's unbelievable to me how many opportunities there are throughout just the average day to seek out fear and have excitement. To feel awkward. Yeah. Every conversation. <laughs> it's <laughs> almost ridiculous. If you simply just listen to what people are telling you, and when you have a, a, a disagreeing thought, to share it with them. It's so simple, and it's powerful. Oh, so, yeah, I, go ahead, you, guys. you know, you can either be a, a meerkat or a lion. When there's fear in the air, in the, in the uh, Serengeti, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but no, there's some I'm really relevant follow, here. I'm following you. You know, when there's fear in the open field, a meerkat will run right back into its hole, run quickly away from that fear. But a lion, on the other hand, dude, that lion, it puts its tail up, it starts wagging, it starts roaring, and it chases and runs down that fear to the point that it'll chase down its fear even if it means the lion's going to sacrifice its own life. And I, I want to be the lion. Yeah, which really brings me to another point that I've been so passionate about lately, and that is that a spirit of fear is not a spirit of God. And we as fellow believers in God, and we believe that we have the creator of the universe behind us, that we have an army of angels behind us, if you are scared of something this world has to offer, then in my opinion there is a serious underlying issue. And so you would be scared of. You know, which rem- I will, which reminds me of what we were talking about last night. That what people are scared of is what people think about them. They're scared of what other people, a man's judgment. And what I think that is also, if you're a religious person or a Christian, that it's it's basically blasphemous. Come on, to behave in the way that you're letting what you imagine other people think about you to prevent you from tapping into your greatness. That is sinful. Yeah. I'm I'm going to say that's sinful. To idolize human beings' judgments. I love that. Idolizing human beings' judgments. Including your own. Are you a human idolizer? (laughs) That is such a great question. Are you a human idolizer? And let me tell you, there's a way to go about not becoming a human idolizer. And it's not by just saying, I don't care about what people think. No. Actually, it's... it's, When they say, I don't care, they care. Yeah, yeah. When you hear someone (laughs) say, I don't care what you think, but then they, like, continue to... um, Crap, I'm running short of words like that. (laughs) defend themselves, obviously they do care. And it's very natural, I care a lot about what people think. The, the, uh, what we have found to be the more accurate way going about to resolve this, like people uh, worshiping people's judgments, is to uh, openly admit that I do. I really care what people think about me. And to openly express anything that comes up with you in that moment. And over a period of time of doing that, you will naturally begin to care less. And I've only, I only know that because that's what's happened to me. 
And by the, revealing what you typically consider you're releasing yourself of that. Yes. That, that nature, that sinful nature. It's, I'm not saying that you're, I'm a sinner. I care about what people think. Yeah. I, and sometimes maybe I idolize people's judgments. Maybe I'm around someone that I think is very important or I care a lot about what they think and I start to be able to behave in a way that's not congruent in the way that I feel. And that's where I think I fall into the trap of idolizing humans. However, when I can maybe admit Maybe there's like that. There's like a door open. There's a door blocking me from being who I am. I have to open the door. And be like, look at me. I'm human. I care about what you think. And I was behaving in a way that I actually didn't feel. This is my true self right now. Mm -hmm. This is what I imagine to be my truth. And I'm going to share that with you, regardless of what you think, because only God can judge me. Yeah, and that's one level to care what other people think about you. And then there's a whole other level of caring what other people think about your thoughts. And your judgments. Mm -hmm. You know, how scared are we of telling people what we really think about them? You know, our judgments, our resentments, our negative thoughts towards them. We don't, we naturally don't want to share that with people because we're so scared it might hurt their feelings or it might, we might be perceived in a very negative light. But the way I do that is that is just our sinful nature. That it is, it, it is what God has saved us from is that we are sick. We have sick thoughts. We have sick thoughts about people, shallow judgments, and not that we're proud of that. But more so, putting your image on the line, saying, hey, like, you know, I, I have this negative judgment about you. I'm not proud of it. But this is what God has saved me from. I am anything but perfect. And look how ugly and sick I am on the inside. Yeah, and when I say only God can judge me, I got a little Tupac-ish there. But I meant to say that my own heart is saying that only God's judgments matter. Any, everyone's going to judge me. Tupac is? Yeah, that's something that says Tupac CD. Oh my god. Yeah, and <laughs> you may have heard us, or you may have keep hearing us refer that by, through expression, the healing takes place. Well, I, I strongly believe through my personal experience that as long as you resist those emotions or those thoughts in your head, like you, like you have them, and you're like, no, that's not me, that's irrational, I don't want to be part of that, and you resist it, it will persist. But as soon as you bring it to the surface and let everyone see the weakness that you carry around with you and you share that weakness with everyone, it carries less weight on you and you can now be free to become who you want to be. If you want to, we first must, I feel, we must first accept who we truly are. You've got to be true to yourself before you can become who you want to be. Yeah, this is like a, this is like a wisdom bomb field right now. <laughs> I'm proud that I'm part of it. <laughs> Watch out, you're gonna get hit. Um, but I would like to say that we're about a company coming over pretty soon. Oh, that's and good. maybe it's time yeah. to come wrapping up. But I would just like challenge anyone that's stuck, because if you've stuck around this far, you probably, what we're saying matters to you, probably because we're reflecting your greatness and that you want to tap into that even more. Which is that I challenge you next time someone says something, listen, like you said, y'all, you guys said, like, listen to what people are saying, and when something is not congruent to what you say. Hopefully you're going to get cut off. Keep going. Keep going. Keep yeah, and I want to tell you something about what we're doing here. Um, this is not a, like, a, like, a hippie, you know, we're not all about the, like, this ain't new age, it's just old age. Right, this is <laughs> not about, like, everyone feels good, everyone gets along. No, we're going to agree to disagree. I feel like this is a very masculine. We're getting a medieval one. Yeah, if you, look, this is not, this is not learn how to become a feminine male. This is learn how to become a masculine male. When something, you disagree with something, you're going to share it. You're going to take your power back, okay? Or you're going to tap into your masculinity as a female. Yes. And you know, self-love is like the new trendy thing, accepting yourself, full, accept, full self-acceptance. Well, what better way to accept yourself and love yourself than to share everything there is about you? If you had the thought, then it's good enough to be known and to be heard. Mm -hmm. When you're suppressing yourself, you're suppressing your greatness from the world. Or when you say sorry, or when you speak when no one can hear you, there is probably something that you're saying that you don't think deserves to be heard. So watch out for those red flags. And one more example, because I know people sometimes can relate to examples. Last night when someone said, I hate negativity. Dude, that's a good, <laughs> he caught it. I was like, you know what I hate negativity. I'm like, oh, the ultimate paradox. You hate negativity. And he's listening. You know why he's able to catch it? Because he's actually listening to what people say. And he's not just agreeing with what everyone says. And after I was sat through and talked through with her, she kind of came to realize that maybe that's me being that. You know, and maybe she didn't maybe say those words, but I, I brought something to the attention that she was probably not saying what she actually believed. Or that maybe negativity, when someone else is being negative, it, she can learn to appreciate that person that for being negative because 
it reflects how she doesn't like to be negative and she can appreciate them for showing them to the show something they don't want in her life. That's pretty out there. The, yeah, well, yeah, one, one more example before we go. Are we still on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one more example. Last night at the same dinner, there was two different people that were speaking. They were speaking a lot, and I, I really wanted to hear what they had to say, but I could not hear what they were saying. They were speaking, one guy was speaking so fast and uh, unclear that I couldn't understand. Another girl was speaking too quiet. And I told them, you know, hey, like, I, I really want to hear what you're saying, but I can't, I can't understand you. I can't speak up. I, I want to hear what you're saying, but I can't. But how, how did they get to that point? Because so many of the times pe they've talked to people and they didn't hear them and they didn't tell them. They didn't say, hey, I, I, you're going to have to speak up. I don't understand what you're saying. And so the, you're doing a disservice to these people. The, this girl and guy lived their whole lives not knowing that they can't be heard. And what a disservice it is for me to hold that back and say, hey, guys, I can't hear a word you're saying. Which reminds me when people, a lot of times, because I've gotten kind of, I'm obsessive. That's my expertise. I've turned my obsession into a profession. But so many times I'll, I really try to listen to people when they speak. And I'm like, I'm like, what did you say? And I, and, uh, and, I, and everyone else, a lot of people around me like, <laughs> like laugh, like, <laughs> like they didn't hear them. I'm like, well, what did they say? I didn't hear them. And they're like, I don't know. Oh, and I'm like, then what were the freak were you agreeing with? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like well, what the, hey, mister, I don't think really we heard what you said. And it's just like, bring it to the table. If you can't hear them, people speak to be heard, I believe, because that's why I speak to be heard. Yeah. I, I try to mean what I say and say what I mean. So I hope that you guys are doing the same. I, I believe my, maybe my delusional mind believes that you want to do the same thing, that you want to say what you mean and mean what you say. Yeah, uh, love. It requires both the exposure of the positive and the negative. If you're to truly love someone, you have to fully know them and they have to fully know you. And that means that you can't just be encouraging all the time and build people up. When you have an opposing thought, you have to share it. Or if you have a little negative judgment, you have to share it. You have resentment, you have to share it. That is what true love is. How much do we learn by agreeing with everyone that everyone yeah, says? Yeah. Just stay stuck. Yeah, and uh, just to come full circle, when I said deathbed in the beginning of the video, when I'm on my deathbed, I want to know that I lived my life that it was true to myself. And I let things that come up in, my, in me, I came out. And I shared whatever it was that was ha my experience with the hu humanity so I can be a reflection to them. But if we're constantly performing, then we don't know who, we, who everyone actually is and how do we, how we're, we're comparing ourselves to performers. Yeah, you're here on this earth. What a, what a blessing for it to be existent on this earth. So don't live it half live by not expressing who you are. Show the world who you are. You know what's the biggest trap of all is having someone fall in love with the character you're playing. Mm. Oh man, I feel bad. For that. I feel bad for that situation. Heavy. Let the, and I'd much rather encourage you, let the bridges you burn light your way and find someone that falls in love with you for who you are. Because mm -hmm. once that person starts loving you for the role you're playing, then you are stuck where you're going to have to do a, deal with a much bigger bomb. And it just so happens that when you start to really own yourself, like every, every part about yourself, people tend to fall in love with you. Yeah, I think you're much more lovable that way. Just, uh, when, you were, when you are who you are, who you were designed to be, that's when people can really respect and appreciate you. Heavy stuff, man. And you know, when we can all acknowledge and accept that we are responsible for our own feelings, it's then that we can start sharing our stuff without being too worried about hurting someone else's feelings. Don't take responsibility for how someone else feels and don't give someone else a responsibility for how you feel. You know, there's lots of points we're touching on. I'm thinking about there's two that I want to leave you with. That I want to at least leave you. Leave you, you leave that. I'm gonna leave. I want to leave two more. Right, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna leave, leave you considering with this. Maybe people like this last night, but would you consider that to the degree that you allow yourself to feel anger, sadness, madness, fear, is to the same degree that you allow yourself to feel happiness, blissful, joy, laughter, comedy. Would you consider that? Not that they need to be equal, but to the degree. Are you going to let yourself fully get angry when you're supposed to be angry? When something triggers you, are you going to let yourself feel angry? Or are you going to dull it down? Are you going to get angry? Or is when something happens, when that perfect eight frame barrel comes in and you get the, the ride of your lifetime, are you just like, that was good? Yeah. 
That's, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a great point, man. Yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I say I say ride the roller coaster of life because it is. Roller that much coaster. Can you imagine like you got a roller coaster like, hey, only put me on when it's flat and take me off before, <laughs> before that. I prefer that ride. That would be a boring yeah. ride, dude. That's yeah. it. You go on your car and drive in the neighborhood. Yeah. Driving circles around your cul de sac. <laughs> and this stuff is so <laughs> What is that? This stuff Where is so hard. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I was saying, this stuff is so hard. So exciting. And, and you know, we're, we're talking about this stuff, but it ain't easy. It is so difficult. We've been working on this. Day in, day out for a couple, like a year or two. Well, what a practice! A practice that you can work on your whole life. It is. It's Man. awesome. I'll but tell you, a practice when you when you can figure it out in a month or a week or a mm-hmm. year. It's a lifetime practice, mm-hmm. but so difficult, and that's why we are in this together. Let's share how difficult it is with each other. Man, um, health. You want to talk about health? You think eating a green salad, being vegan, or being vegetarian, or being paleo is healthy? How about being honest? And I mean, I'm not talking about this when someone asks you a question, you tell the truth. I'm talking about not withholding your thoughts. Don't carry around those thoughts to yourself. You gotta express them. And that is a huge you, component of health. You can see it. Yeah, you physically. Can see it. We've yeah. had people on our retreats that they've withheld certain feelings and emotions for years. And when that is coming out, you don't see many things uglier than that. It is like a demon being released. You might lose 20 pounds of resentment on your lower belly. <laughs> you might fall in love for the first time ever. <laughs> you might have a poop that's so big and you're like, wow, I can't even believe I lived with that in me. And it's just simply by expressing your, your secrets or your current secrets. Hmm. All right. The Dale brought up a good point yesterday uh, that the three of us, right, are very rarely do you see, and this has been pointed out to us so many times, very rarely do you see three brothers that still have a loving relationship with each other, but even more rare, almost impossible, do you see three brothers working lovingly together. Passionately loving. We are so passionate about this. Yeah, we're very passionate about We're working, well, I'm not saying that we haven't had, we've had some big bumps, We've had some experiences that would have sent people hiking for the hills. <laughs> I think it's because we decided to stick with each other through those bumps. Yeah, dude. And it's can, awesome, man. It's a testament. To stuck, stick through each other and enjoy the, the gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. It's a testament to me uh, for uh, God's will for our life. Yeah, you, want, you think going through college is hard? You think losing 50 pounds is hard? You think finding a girlfriend is hard? Well, try running a business with your two brothers. <laughs> it's right. awesome. Speaking of, it takes honesty. If you like more of this and you want some business, business commercial, we just confirmed our uh, next retreat. Oh, dude, Costa Rica! October 24th through 28th, in a place in Costa Rica we haven't been before, so it's really important for us to go to places we haven't been. That way we have beginner eyes as we're mm-hmm. facilitating a retreat. It'll be easy for you to have beginner eyes. I think we had two girls sign up today. Um, most of my our retreats are usually half women, half guys. Last time there was a few couples. That was pretty awesome. Some real love going on there. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we got Steamboat coming up July 3rd through 7th, Traverse City August 10th to 14th, and uh, Costa Rica October 24th through the 28th. Aren't you happy we saved the commercials for the end? <laughs> yeah, guys. Join us in this journey of life. We're so excited about it, and we hope you are too. Let's let's. Ride the roller coaster together. You do you, and I'm gonna do me. I'm not in this world to live up to your expectations, and you're not in this world to live up to mine. We are up in this world to live up to God's expectations. Our Creator, He created us, and we're gonna we're gonna give thanks to Him. We're gonna honor Him by being who we were created to be. Boom. <laughs> um, cool. Cool. I, I kind of want to put like a secret word, y'all, a secret word to put at the end if someone made it through this far. I just want to see, I just want to see the people that stuck with us this far. You do you. You do oh, you. Oh, you want to do one word. Oh, that's fine. You do you. You do you. Alright, if you say you do you, then we know that you did us. 
<laughs> what about congrats? <laughs> congrats? Yeah. Congrats? Alright, let's do congrats. Congrats. There's some more reasons behind that than you even know. Algorithms. More people to hear this message. <laughs> it's important if you watch it all the way through here, then you probably want other people to hear this too. Alright, so the secret word is congrats. Congrats. Congrats to making it this far. Yes. <laughs>